And all the evidence is there. It's all on the internet. You can see what these guys said, and you can see exactly how they've been wrong. Whereas I have a very different track record online. I have the things that I've written about. So I can show that I have a lot of credibility on understanding the economy and understanding the gravity of the situation that's in front of us. See, the politicians never want to avert a crisis. They always want to wait for a crisis to happen. That's why they didn't do anything about the NASDAQ bubble until after it burst. They didn't do anything about the housing bubble until after it burst. But this next financial crisis is so great that we can't wait. We need to do something in advance. We can't wait to the Japanese and the, and, and the Chinese to figure this game out and impose uh, this austerity on us from abroad. We have, to, we have to act on our own to head this off and make the right decisions while we still have time uh, to make them. Otherwise, it's going to be a mess. I mean, it's, if we thought it was bad in 2008, what's coming is going to be a lot worse. I know there are a lot of people now who are running in the Republican Party here in Connecticut, around the country, who are starting to sound like me, who are starting to say some of these things. You know, where were these people three or four years ago or five years ago when it was unpopular to say this stuff? And how do you trust what they're going to do when they get elected? Because I don't. I mean, I've been fooled by Republicans in the past. I was very enthusiastic when I supported Ronald Reagan. I voted for him twice. I, was, I, had, I had a poster of Ronald Reagan on my dorm room in, in UC Berkeley, which you know didn't win me a lot of friends in Berkeley, particularly with women, because you know, I, I, you know, I'd bring them up to the dorm room at night, and we'd end up having a political argument, which is not the reason that, that I brought him up there. But I mean, I've had these... These, these convictions my entire life. I criticized the big government policies when George Bush and when his father was implementing them. But certainly when, when, when George W., who I'm going to meet for the first time next week in China, we're both, we're sharing, we're both speaking at an investment conference in China, so I'll finally get a chance to meet the guy. But I criticized him a lot when he was president because of the policies he pursued. He didn't veto a single bill in his first term. You know, and during his presidency, the government increased spending faster than under Lyndon Johnson. So they say a lot of good things to get elected, but once they're in office, they act like Democrats. And the problem is they're politicians first, they're Republicans second. And once they get in office, all they do is try to get reelected, they try to increase their power base, or they try to expand government. We can't afford to do that anymore. We've compromised on these, uh, on these uh, principles for too long. The country is in too bad a shape. We don't have a lot of time. You know, one of my other predictions that I made, I'll get to your question, was that I thought that we were going to have an immigration problem, that if we didn't change soon, that people were going to be leaving the country. And I just read an article last week, I don't know how many saw this article, it was in, I think it was in the New York Times, that said that among college graduates now, what most kids want to do is leave the country. They want to get jobs abroad. And in particular, the groups that are leaving the fastest are children of immigrants, Chinese, Indian, whose parents came here. And this article said that the, the children of Chinese immigrants want to leave the country for the same reason their parents came here. They're looking for opportunity. And there are so many Chinese <coughs> leaving America, going back to China, they actually have a word for it. They, they, it's something that translates literally into sea turtles or something like that. They're, they're coming home. We need to stop this, because if we continue to pile on rules and regulations and government spending and more taxes, we're not going to have anybody left to tax, because anybody who really wants to make something of their lives, that really wants to succeed and work hard, they're going to leave the country. Right? Our country was founded by people who came here because the rest of the world had higher taxes and more regulations than we do. If we're going to become the highest tax, the most regulated country in the developed world, we're going to lose population for the same reason. But anyway, if you send me to Washington, at least we have a shot at changing that. And I think I can win this campaign. I don't know, has anyone heard my uh, my radio ads? Oh, yes. I ran those for a couple weeks. The TV ads supposedly started today. Did anybody see that? All right, well, at least one person. So I'm, start I'm running these ads from now until the convention. Right? Before I started these ads, I was at 9% in the polls. And, but I hadn't run any ads. Now, I was 4%. Um, before the debates. So I got on the debates and I went from 4% to 9%. Now, if more people had seen the debates, I'd have gone, I'd have gone even higher. Unfortunately, everybody was watching Jeopardy. But some people watched it. But I think now that I've got these ads out there, I'm going to start sending out direct mail pieces as well. So that's going to happen. And so I expect that by the time the convention comes around, I expect to have 25 to 30% in the polls by the time the convention comes, which means I'll, I'll be right up there 
with either of my two opponents. The main difference is I can beat Dick Blumenthal. They can't. Right? I, I, I don't think there's any way that he can beat me. And, 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 and the reason I, I think that is I, I, I don't think he can debate with me. But if you look at Dick Blumenthal, what is he? Right? Nobody likes lawyers and nobody likes politicians, and he's both. Right? And he's been a lawyer politician in Hartford for 20 years, and the state's a disaster. Per capita, we're the most indebted nation, state in the nation. How is he going to take that record to Washington? Right? Take, send me to Washington because I've done such a great job in Sacramento? He's done a lousy job I mean, in, in, in Hartford. He's done a lousy job in Hartford. What has he done in Hartford? He's taken a small department and grown it into an enormous department. Right? So he specializes in making government bigger. We don't need that. And he also he specializes in filing lawsuits. Right? That's what we need. We, we need more lawsuits. The country's in trouble. We're going to sue our way back to prosperity. It's impossible. So I think a race between a career politician, which is what Blumenthal is, he's going to try to say he's an outsider because he's not in Washington. doesn't matter. He's in Hartford. It's the same difference. He's a career bureaucrat. He's never run a business. He doesn't understand economics. He's an opportunist. He's like a Jesse Jackson. That's all he is. People think he's popular because no one knows anything about him. I think, I, and I think the fact that he's so high up in the polls, he means he's got a long way to fall. And they think he might... He might feel too comfortable with that need, but I think once he's challenged, I think I can challenge him. I think I'm the only one that really can challenge him, especially if I can get him you know, next to me and I can talk about economics because he'll, he'll, he'll fall apart because he's a socialist. So anything he says is going to be very easy for me uh, to make him look like a fool because only a fool can have those beliefs. But when you argue him, and I've argued with socialists my entire life, so I know exactly how to do it. And how, and how to make them look foolish. So I think if I run against them, it's a real campaign on the issues. It's do you want a career politician or a businessman, an economist, an entrepreneur? Do you want someone who's been part of the problem or who might be part of the solution? It's a real, you know, throw the bums out. We need somebody new type of campaign. And I'm, I, I'm uniquely qualified to run that, and I'm going to get funded. I mean, I have almost 20,000 people that have donated my campaign. That's a lot of people. Most of them are young. Um, you know, there's a lot more money behind it if I actually get the nomination. A lot of people have given me money just to show support. They just assume I can't win because I've been so low in the polls. But the minute my numbers come up and people actually think I have a shot, I expect to get a lot more money uh, from all around the country. And it's not, none of my money comes from special interests. All my money comes from individuals who care about one thing, this country. They care about liberty, they care about the Constitution, they care about capitalism, and they want me in the United States Senate because that's what I stand for. And they know that if I'm there, I'm going to represent those interests. Anyway, let me take your calls. I know I've been, your questions, right? I know I've been speaking for a while, and I know there's other people here. So any questions on any issue, uh, I'll answer. Yeah. Even though it's not a great idea, isn't a 6% uh, inflation rate politically more palatable? Politicians like that, they don't. Well, politicians always prefer inflation. We drop our, our national debt by what, twenty percent in four years? Yeah, politicians prefer to take our money through inflation than through taxation, and they generally prefer to try to inflate their debts away than to honestly repudiate them. But we're worse off through inflation, and we're not going to have a six percent rate of inflation. We'll be lucky to get away with a sixty percent rate of inflation. It's going to be much worse than that. Unfortunately, the debts are too big. The amount of inflation they have to create is too big. And again, the national debt is very short term. So once our creditors sense that we're trying to inflate, they don't have to sell their bonds. They just don't roll them over. And, and so interest rates will skyrocket once the perception of higher inflation is out there. See, right now, people are still fooled. They haven't figured it out yet. But they have shortened their maturities. And it is going to come. And the problem with inflation is, see, government likes inflation because they're the world's biggest debtor. But what about the people in this room? What if you have savings? You get wiped out. What if you have a pension? What if you have a, an insurance policy? The cash value is wiped out. What if you're working for wages? What happens to the value of your wages? What happens to the cost of living? Inflation is the worst tax because it hits the average working class American. It hurts our retirees, people on fixed income. It hurts them the most. And unfortunately, that's the, the path of least resistance for our politicians. I want to try to be in Washington and make sure that we don't try to inflate our way out of this problem because we end up inflating our way into a bigger problem. We have to be honest with the mess that we're in. 
we have to be honest with the American people that we can't afford to keep these commitments, that the politicians have promised more than the taxpayers can deliver. And that means we have to make real, meaningful cuts in these programs. If we try to pretend that we don't have to cut the program, that everybody can get their Social Security benefits, then the Social Security benefits won't be worth anything because they'll be worthless because the money will be worthless. 